how many of you are in there? Why do you need to know? You're taking a bloody census. Now my mum's beer, get yourselves together, lads. You there, outside the door. Geralt, that right? Yeah, Geralt. Listen, Geralt, let's cut to the thick of it. We survived a shipwreck recently. Beasts from the depths ate some of my lads, and the rest of us found shelter here. Not too special, that, as dangers litter this isle, but it does go to explain why we're a wee bit distrustful. No way you can get to this isle conventionally. Crikey, you call a shipwreck conventional? Leave it me, mate. You know what it means. <coughs> Let me explain. A short while past, we were on route from Skellige to Mogadag. And Ferenc got talking with the captain. He sold him a magic firefly for potted to know the way to a hidden treasure. Welcome to another Witcher lore video. I was considering what video to make today, when after looking through some comments, I saw this suggestion by this user, and I honestly thought that this seemed like a really interesting subject to cover, as when you go there in The Witcher 3, you actually find out very little about this mysterious isle, except for a few minor details, so I've decided to make today's video on the Isle of Mists. To begin with, I will discuss the events in The Witcher 3 that led to Geralt visiting this isle, and also I will discuss what happened to Geralt whilst on this isle. Geralt first learns about the Isle of Mists after curing the elf Avalach of a curse that had caused the elf to transform into a small disfigured man known as Uma. The elf had been hiding Ciri on the isle in hopes that whilst there she would not be discovered by Eredin, the king of the wild hunt who had been pursuing her. Geralt travels to the isle guided by a magical firefly created by Avalach, and whilst on this isle Geralt found a lone house that at the time was currently being occupied by a group of lost dwarves. After some debate, the dwarves agreed to let Geralt enter the cabin on the condition he went to look for their lost friends. Geralt agreed and searched the isle hoping to find them. In the end, Geralt returned with one dwarf as one had been killed and the second, although alive when Geralt discovered him, died shortly after by falling from his spot of safety. The dwarves allowed Geralt to enter the cabin whilst they headed to the shore, hoping to leave in Geralt's boat. The witcher entered the cabin and saw Ciri, she lay quietly on a bed and appeared to be dead. That was when Avalach's magical firefly entered Ciri and seemed to wake up the life in her. After this, Geralt and Ciri have a brief discussion but are soon found by the Wild Hunt. This is when Ciri uses her Elder Blood abilities to flee the Isle with Geralt to Kaer Morhen. That's the events that happened in The Witcher 3 and as I'm sure you can tell, we don't find out all that much about the Isle, other than it's magical and for some reason the Wild Hunt would have difficulty tracking Ciri there. So I will explain everything I know about this isle. To begin with, this isle is in Skellige and only appears to be accessible via two methods. The first is for fate to deem you worthy or by the use of magic such as Ciri's Elder Blood abilities or Avalach's Firefly. This reveals that the island may not only be hidden through the use of magic, but in fact may possess some magical properties itself. The island itself is surrounded by a mist that no matter what time of day it is, it never seems to clear. It is also surrounded by large rocks and smaller islands, and after searching through these smaller islands, there doesn't appear to be anything worth mentioning on them. The island has a variety of ships around it, all of which, other than Geralt's boat, appear to have crashed. This supports the theory that most who enter this isle are not aware of its existence and find it completely by accident. There are also various chests throughout the isle, some of which are around the remains of the beach shipwrecks and some of which are strangely in tree stumps. The island only possesses two unnatural buildings, the first being a cabin and the second being a lighthouse. The cabin is simple enough, it has a simple fireplace, a bed, some shelves and a table with a set of chairs. But despite being simple in appearance, it does appear to be built into a rocky hill and strangely it has a back window despite that side of the house being within the rock face. The lighthouse is located in the northwest of the island, but yet again, there appears to be nothing out of the ordinary about it. It is a simple lighthouse with a few wooden chests and boxes located inside of it. As I've said, both the cabin and the lighthouse are simple in appearance, but what is truly interesting about them is the fact that if this island is magic and not many know of it, who built the lighthouse and cabin? And why? The cabin makes sense. Avalach could have potentially built it using magic as a place where he could stay and get away from the world, we know from the books and the games that he takes great pleasure in having his own solitary space, and the fact that it possesses the unusual features I mentioned before proves that it may have been built through magical means, but the question remains, 
Why is there a lighthouse? Even if you ignore the fact that the island is covered in a thick mist, so the thick light from the lighthouse isn't visible, there is also the fact that the island is hidden and not many will know how to get there. It seems completely pointless. My personal theory is that based on the architecture, it was most likely designed by humans, dwarves, or elves from the world where most of these games take place, which is the world of the Enshe. And when I say populated, I don't mean massively populated, I mean by perhaps one person or maybe a family. Sadly, we have no confirmation on any theory like this, but for now, that's just a bit of speculation. There is also a small cave system that runs underneath parts of the island. It can lead to both the island's rocky beach and to a small cave where both a chest and a dwarf are located. I believe this dwarf may have been part of the original company of dwarfs Geralt finds when he first arrives on the island. I also believe that after crashing, this dwarf pulled himself and the chest into the cave for safety and then died. But yet again, no confirmation, that's just a bit of speculation, and I think it seems pretty plausible considering the dwarf hasn't decomposed. Perhaps his friends simply knew that he was already dead. Now for this island's inhabitants. The island houses a variety of monsters, including harpies, biohags, sirens, foglets, wraiths, and finally, a lone fiend. As you can see, other than the fiend and the harpies, most of these monsters seem to have some relation to water. One very interesting piece of information that may interest all of you is that the quest, the Isle of Mists, which is where this isle is shown to us, is actually inspired by the fairy tale of Snow White. For one, there are seven dwarves involved, one keeps sneezing and another keeps falling asleep. This is in reference to the characters Sneezy and Sleepy. Also, there is an even more obvious reference, as when finding Siri, she can be seen sleeping, similar to Snow White, and then, after Geralt's embrace, she wakes, similar to when the prince kisses Snow White in the fairy tale. Granted, the Firefly is what truly woke her up, but I think the reference is still there. But I think that's quite an interesting piece of information, as we know CD Projekt Red likes to incorporate fairy tales into their games. I mean, look at the land of a thousand fables. Anyway, to end today's video, I will read the journal entry on the quest The Isle of Mists, and then state one final piece of trivia. First, the journal entry. After a long search, Geralt was at last a step from his goal. Avalok had hid Ciri from the hunt on the magical Isle of Mists, which could only be reached if fate deemed one worthy or by following a magic firefly, which was decidedly the easier option. Geralt thus readied himself to sail to the Isle and bring back Ciri. Finally, after years of separation, weeks of searching, dozens of false trails, and endless worry, Geralt had found Ciri. They were not given long to celebrate their reunion, however. As soon as Ciri awoke from her magical slumber, the wild hunt picked up her trail and began to attack. Geralt and his adopted daughter thus had no choice but to use Ciri's special abilities to flee to Kaer Morhen and face their attackers there. The final piece of trivia is that this isle is thought to be based on specifically the Isle of Bayan, from Slavic folklore. This isle was hidden in a cloud of mists. Anyway guys, that's the end of today's video. I hope you've all enjoyed. This has been a really interesting one to make. I've honestly had a really interesting time. I think this isle is a really cool place to go to in The Witcher 3, and the fact we don't really find out that much about it in the games makes this video really interesting for me to make. So I hope you've all learned something new, or at least enjoyed the video. As always guys, if you've enjoyed today's video, be sure to like it. These videos take me a long time to make, so liking the video really does help me out, and I just want to say thank you to every single one of you that does that, as honestly, it's really, really kind. Thank you all for doing that. Also, if this is the first video you're finding on my channel, be sure to subscribe. I do Witcher lore videos every few days, I do a Witcher playthrough, I do Red Dead parts, I plan to do other lore in the future, so be sure to subscribe to make sure you don't miss any of that. Thank you to every single one of you that subscribes, and has subscribed, it's very, very kind of you. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter, I do updates on there whenever anything interesting happens, whenever I want to share some news with you, say if I were to go live on Twitch, I just want to show you some pictures of stuff that I'm working on, or stuff that I think is cool, I post it all on there, so be sure to go and follow me on Twitter. I also retweet any news to do with The Witch or anything like that that I find interesting, so if you don't want to miss any of that, be sure to follow me on Twitter. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitch. I've been streaming on there a lot more recently. I recently played the entirety of Amnesia in one stream. It took around about five hours, and I had a really cool time with you guys, and I'd love to have more of you there. So if you want to go and follow me on Twitch, that'd be really, really awesome. I played some Fallout 76 beta on there recently, and it was really cool. So thank you to every single one of you that does that. Also, be sure to join the Reddit and Discord, and as always, all the links for everything I talk about so you can follow me on all these things if you really want to or join the reddit or the discord are down in the description so be sure to check there if you're interested finally guys as always a big thank you to the patreon pledges you guys are honestly amazing it's so kind what you do i just want to say thank you to every single one of these names as honestly you're all so amazing you help up with the channel and you help me pay for my software for things and various games that i might buy specifically to stream for you guys so thank you to every single one of you that donates to me on patreon you're all honestly amazing anyway guys i hope you've all enjoyed today's video 
and I'll see you all in the next one. Have an awesome rest of the week.